Hey guys, since we're doing update videos, a quick update video again this time, but this time it's about my workstation and the Ryzen 3000 upgrade. Or I guess as we are going to call it going forward, the road to Ryzen 3000. Over the last two days, a lot of new news regarding the Ryzen 3000 series has been released. So I thought it was time for a short update regarding my plans with my desktop and the Ryzen 3000 series. I think we're going to say Ryzen 3000 a lot in this video, but eh, it's kind of the subject. So let's first quickly discuss the news that came out, and that is mainly the new Ryzen series processor and the X570 chipset. And the most interesting thing, next to 6 cores and 8 core models, they also announced a 12 core model, which I find really exciting. That one is certainly at the top of my list to upgrade to. But first, let's talk a little bit about the new X570 chipset. So, the new Ryzen processor, and with that its new chipset, is fully PCIe Generation 4. And although that is nice for the long run, Currently, it won't be doing that much for you. Yes, you can put a 5 gigabyte per second SSD in there, but I have a hard time thinking of a desktop workload where you are going to get any benefit from that. For servers, sure, you can have all kinds of storage configuration, 40 gigabit, 100 gigabit networks. That will certainly be a thing, but for desktops, I don't know. Right now, maybe not, but in the future, sure. Oh. And for the people I had a discussion with in my Discord server, the Ryzen 3000 series processors is going to have 24 PCIe lanes, like all Ryzen processors before it. Times 16 will be going to the GPU in either a times 16 or an 8x8 configuration, and then you'll have times 4 going to a dedicated M2 NVMe SSD slot. And then the last of those 24 lanes will go to the chipset. Some articles online list 40 PCIe lanes in total, but that's total nonsense in my opinion, because a lot of those lanes are multiplexed, or in other terms, shared. The CPU has 24, and even if those are Gen, Gen 4, there are still 24 lanes. That's it. Anyway, let's talk about these CPUs. There was no 16 core part that was announced, and there was also no 5 GHz chip that was announced. And I can't say I'm fully surprised by the 5 GHz part, because I didn't imagine that even on 7 nanometers, the AMD chip designs would be possible of achieving that frequency. Instead, they focused on IPC improvements and memory speeds from what I can see. And I think those are the right choices going forward, especially considering they are trying to cram even more cores in the same area, which thus will create more heat. Getting a higher clock speed often goes paired with less efficiency, and thus generating even more heat, so there has to be a compromise somewhere. Still, they did achieve improvements in clock speed and a 4.6 GHz boost for the 12 core part, so it can't really be called a slouch either. And I think the improvements in performance from the higher amount of cache that they built in, higher memory speeds, and IPC improvements, more cores, and, as I mentioned, a bit of clock speed, are going to provide quite an uplift in my various workloads, from video editing to gaming, compared to my current Ryzen 1700, even while overclocked to 4 GHz. So, the second elephant I mentioned is the missing 16-core part. If that one is going to become available before launch, I might go for that one, since there are very aggressive rumors that it does exist, but I will only get it if it has the same or higher clock speeds than the 12 core part. And actually, I expect it not to have that because of some of the reasons I just mentioned. I think the power constraints of the current AM4 sockets and the power envelopes it needs to fall in cause an issue with a 16 core reaching the same frequencies as the current 12 core supposedly can. And I don't think they were able to scale it up within those envelopes to a 16 core part. So even if they do introduce a 16 core part, I am only going to buy that version if that one indeed has a higher clock speed than the 12 core part. Which I kind of doubt, 
only if they're going to link that specific chip with a higher TDP to the X570 chipset, they might release it with the same or higher clock speeds. But that would break backwards compatibility. So I don't know if they're going to do that. And in my case, if they do release a 16 core with lower clock speeds to fall in all the envelopes, I might get the 12 core because, for instance, 400 extra megahertz are more important for me than four extra cores on top of the already high core count of 12. Certain software I use already has trouble using all eight cores I have now. And although that will keep improving, for now I think some extra frequency will be the best choice. So what I'm kind of trying to say is that I suspect these might be the reasons why they haven't announced the 16 core part right now, and they might do so in the future, but I wouldn't get my hopes up that in a chip that will get even hotter and has more cores on a tiny surface area because of the seven nanometer everything gets got smaller so the amount of cooling you can apply to that same area is smaller i kind of doubt they're going to release something five gigahertz or even at the clock speeds the 12 core has for the 16 core part but we're going to have to see in regards to the motherboards from what I've been seeing up until now, I think I will go with an Asus offering this time. I had a gigabyte last time, and although it was okay, uh, it was kind of a middle-end board, and I'd like to go to a higher-end board. So I'm thinking of the Crosshair 7 Hero, but we'll see when all the details and pricing becomes available. But, this isn't only a Ryzen video, I'm planning to do more. I've been using my current PC for over the past two years, and although the components selected were pretty good, they weren't without their issues. So that's going to change. First off, the case. I originally went with a Fantax P400S tempered glass edition, and although it looked nice, it was kind of flimsy, and it turns out way too restrictive on airflow on the front. Even though I had three times 120 millimeters trying to push air into the case from the front, the front bezel would restrict that airflow so much that the fans would make a giant racket, I could hear it in the next room, and if I just pulled off the front bezel, that would shave off about 10 degrees of my CPU during load. That's just unacceptable. So basically this has been a loud, nice looking PC, but I'm kind of done with the noise. And well, after two years of trying to work with that and tweak it, it's going to go. I'm replacing the case and I'm replacing all the fans and the RGB inside of the case. Although RGB is nice, buying fans with RGB in them but getting an inferior product as a fan in regards to airflow and noise, I'm just kind of done with that. On top of that, one of them actually died and so I'm going to do it completely different. And that's when I got into contact with Noctua and asked if they were willing to help me with this project. And they gracefully agreed and decided to sponsor me for this build. They, for instance, sent over a bunch of these very, very nice uh, NFA 12 times 24 PWM fans, which basically is the best PC fan in the world, if you ask me. And well, let's see how those do in comparison to my RGB fans I had in there before. So I'm not going to share right now what I'm going to do. But let's just say that what I have planned and it all works, I will have built the ultimate RGB PC while also still using Noctua fans for ultimate quiet and cooling. I have always loved using Noctua products in the past, so this isn't just a sponsored ad. I mean, look at my previous PC. This was all Noctua and I loved it. I am actually one of the people who doesn't hate their color scheme. So yeah. Sorry about that. So yeah, but especially the difference in sound between that old PC and my current one. I'll try and show that difference in an upcoming video when I do the upgrades to my current chassis and PC, but it really doesn't compare if you ask me. But this is also where I'm going to stop the current video. I can't wait to get started with the whole Ryzen 3000 upgrade and well, the whole new case and what I have planned for it. If you are excited too, make sure to subscribe and join along with building a beautiful PC 
but silent with over the top RGB. I'm planning to put over a thousand LEDs in there, so it might just look as bright as the sun, but eh, we'll see. In future videos, we're going to do the actual build and compare some benchmarks to my current Ryzen 1700. That same Ryzen 1700, but overclocked to 4 gigahertz, and then whatever Ryzen 3000 I end up getting. So thank you for watching. And uh, as I said, I hope you'll uh, join along in my journey. Maybe join our Discord server. I love discussing all kinds of stuff like this. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.